It's Ryan's birthday. It's 6 a.m. I think it's time we wake him up. Come on. So who's, who's, uh, whose genius idea was that? Let me guess. <laughs> My name is Justin, and I'm in a band called Recycle Percussion. We started 20 years ago in the state of New Hampshire, and now have our own headline show in Las Vegas, where we perform over 600 shows a year. And that's just where the chaos begins, because in the house behind me lives a rock band, my family, the most beautiful daughters in the world, two dogs, where's the other one? Two fish, two fish? One fish, in endless chaos. But above all, we love to give back and make a difference. So welcome to our world of chaos and kindness. This morning I received an email about a gentleman named Michael. Michael's from New Hampshire and has terminal cancer. And the more I read about the story, I realized this guy is an absolute inspiration. So all morning I've been thinking like, we have to do something for this guy, his family. Is there something that we can do that would make a difference? And I have a few ideas in my head, so I wanna, get the band, Quinn, everyone together uh, today, like ASAP, to talk about maybe some things that we can do for him. Hello? Hey baby, are you home? Yeah, I'm here, what's up? Are the rest of the guys in the band around by chance? Um, I've seen them, I think so, they're okay. around. Can you get them together? I'm, I'm coming back home real quick. I wanna have a real quick band meeting. Um, I have an idea, I'll explain when I get home. All right, yeah. I know I dragged you guys here like, you know, last second notice, but this morning I came across a story of this guy named Michael uh, who lives in New Hampshire, late 30s, um, has a family much like ours, you know, he has two kids, two boys, and he has terminal cancer. At this point in time, you know, they, they, they don't know how long he has to live, but they've pretty much given up hope that he's going to, you know, survive this, this cancer he has. I remember when I was in middle school getting a phone call from my mother and she told me that my grandfather had been diagnosed with terminal brain cancer and they didn't have very long to live and I remember that heart-dropping feeling. You know, Michael's story it really hits home for me because my mother is a nurse and she spent 30 years working in oncology and in hospice helping people with cancer. I know our schedule is really insane these next you know two weeks and I'm trying to think what we could pull off for this guy in the next eight nine days that would be amazing. The most important thing for me would be, what do I teach my children? What can I leave behind that my children go, my dad was, was a hero to me. He was, a, he was somebody who inspired me. So I have this idea where we can build something for him. Some kind of like monument, something that celebrates this, this amazing person's life. When Justin shared Michael's story, I instantly felt a connection. I can't imagine what they're going through as a family. And I look at my little girls and think, God, what would it be like for them to grow up without their dad around? Quinn, I'm gonna put you in charge of fundraising because you're, just, you're good at that kind of thing. So bring Blake in on this. See if you, see if you, see if you two can come up with like a really cool idea. I know that this is a lot, but I really believe that this is completely possible. So let's take our extra energy that we have in between shows, make those phone calls, get this thing done, and come together to make this something special for Michael. In Vegas, we do some pretty incredible things, but this week alone takes the cake, literally. Because not only is it Ryan and Blake's birthdays, but this week we will perform 36 shows right here in Las Vegas. 
See, we teamed up with JCB, one of the largest manufacturers of tractor and tractor equipment, to put together an amazing show. So for the last several months, we've been working really hard, hand in hand with them, to come up with some really radical ideas. And let me tell you, it is insane. Oh my God, I went to jump in the van and totally biffed the landing and just came straight out the back. They've given us all kinds of toys to play with, but this one, this one's my favorite. This thing takes you up 30 feet in the air and spins you 360 degrees on a tractor. Yeah, is this Paul? Yes, it is. Paul, Justin Spencer, Recycled Percussion. I'm so excited right now because we have this idea to do something super special for Michael, to create something that's never been made before. But it's a huge undertaking, and we weren't sure it was possible to pull together in the eight days that we have. There's this beautiful picture of Michael and his kids where they're holding his hands and looking up at him. I feel like it's a symbol of the love that they have for each other and how much he inspires them. So we have this vision to try and bring this picture to life by turning it into a monument that will last forever. It's gonna be heavy, huh? No, it's gonna be super heavy, yeah. Now you're talking, you're talking a lot of weight and that base has gotta be substantial if you're talking 120 inches long. But the phone call I just had gave me confirmation and hope that we absolutely can do it. Yeah, that's no problem. You know, you tell me when you wanna be here to do the deal and I can have the plate ready, no problem. Okay, man, I appreciate it. We'll talk right, to you thanks soon. thanks a lot, Justin, I appreciate it. Okay, bye. So now, the real work begins. When Justin told me I was in charge of fundraising, I thought, well, Michael has kids, so what better opportunity to bring our girls into the mix and show them the importance of giving back. And Blake here has an incredible idea. Now's the perfect time to tell Daddy about your idea. I want to make a music video, and I want to do all the choreography, and I want to get all the costumes and dress you guys up. Last night, Blake came up to me and said that she had an idea. She wanted to take the band and make a music video in order to raise enough money to do something very special for Michael. So how is this going to make money for Michael? How is this going to help him? If I get 100 people to donate, I will make the music video and then we'll have enough money to help Michael. Lo and behold, she accomplished her goal. Blake has been working really hard on this music video and I cannot wait to see what she comes up with. I think Michael's going to like this. Now that we have the funds that we need to get this project done for Michael, I have to hop on a 1 a.m. flight tonight after our show, fly to New Hampshire, and just a few short days pull off a miracle. My goal is to surprise Michael with this incredible gift on behalf of myself and the rest of the guys in the band. Hey man, thanks for having us. No problem, glad you could make it. <laughs> yeah. 
Last night, I was on stage in Las Vegas. Today, I'm in Fremont, New Hampshire, where I'm trying to get Michael's project done in a four short days. My name is Paul. I work here at Quality Flame Cutting in Fremont. Um, it's been a pretty quiet winter, but Justin called me from Recycle Percussion a few days ago, and he had something awesome that we wanted to do. So once he told me about it, I said, man, I gotta get the shop involved, and we're just about ready to go to start this. These guys in here are incredible. Wait until you see what we have in store. That's eight foot there. Yeah, that would look really cool. Twelve hundred pounds. Yep. You know, he was a lot smaller than this one, and he's smaller than the dad. And super precise. Very precise. The sculpture is almost complete. The final step is to paint this bad boy, and let me tell you, it is absolutely amazing. However, the next time I see it will be the same day that Michael and his family sees it. So I'm a little bit nervous, but I can't wait to show this thing to the family. I'm really excited right now uh, and nervous, all mixed into one because after uh, weeks of learning about uh, Michael, Sharon, and, and the kids, I feel like I already know who they are, but I've never met them. And the moment is about to happen where I get to knock on their door and give them a big hug and spend the next couple days with them, laughing and crying with them and sharing stories. And ultimately, um, the big moment where we get to give them this sculpture that we've made uh, for Michael and Sharon, they have no idea this is going to be really special uh, next 48 hours that I get to spend with this family. I'm looking forward to it. Nice to meet you. What's up, dude? This is Dexter. Dexter, what's going on? This is our little guy. That's Oliver. Oliver. Hey. Hi. I'm Justin. What's going on? Nice to meet you. It was awesome the second I met Michael and his family. When the doors opened and the kids came running, I felt at home. Because you could tell this family had a bond. And at that moment, I knew we had picked a great family to support. People, you know, I mean, we're, we're wired to want to survive forever. Like 500 years if we could. And it's amazing. You, you have two options. You either fight or you don't. And the inspiration comes when you fight. About midway through 2012, I started having some diffuse abdominal pain. And then I came home from working a night shift slept the day, woke up in about a quarter size puddle of blood. And uh, I called my doctor and said, you know, something's not right. I've had this pain, got a little bit of blood. So they got me in for a colonoscopy right away. And uh, 21 centimeters into the colon, there was a six centimeter tumor that had eaten through the bowel wall and into the abdominal cavity. And then uh, obviously came back positive for cancer and as well as four lymph nodes. So anything greater than three makes you stage four. So I went from being 34, wife, kids, career, everything I've ever wanted to have in my life, to now I'm out of a job, I'm home, and I sit here by myself five days a week. The hardest part of the day was listening to Michael describe the kind of mental and physical pain this guy goes through every day just to spend more time with his family. Picture the worst nausea you've ever had, just physical anguish, everything hurt. Um, I couldn't get enough medicine into me to, to make me feel any better. And then you're here with your wife and you're bawling your eyes out in front of her and then you start thinking like, you know, I'm not gonna have these opportunities anymore and I'm not gonna be able to talk to her anymore. And they start talking about, let's cut down this drug and cut down this drug. And the more they take away from me, the less I have 
for an opportunity to be here still with my family. You know what I mean? It just, uh, you know, every time something like that happens, I have to deal with, you know, putting my kids to bed that night and knowing how many more times do I get to do that, you know? I've been writing letters to each of them individually to try to hit the hallmark periods, you know? And you turn 16 and, you know, how to treat ladies and how Sharon and I met our whole story, our whole meat story, so they know that whole thing. And uh, then I started doing some videos, which is even harder to try to look into the camera and try to talk to your child that you're probably not gonna see anymore. Something that stood out to me was the love that Michael has for Sharon. You can see it in his eyes, like high school sweethearts, how much they love each other. A world without the two of us, to me, doesn't make sense. It doesn't feel right. Um, yeah, she's, she's definitely been everything that I could ever want or need. She is more than medicine's going to do for me. She's more than therapy's going to do for me. She's the end of my night who I go wind down with and talk to, and we talk about the kids, and we talk about our life. And we talk about what little future we may have left and how sad that is. And uh, I've loved her since the day I met her. When you get married and you say, you know, in sickness and health and for better or worse, you say it and, and you think it, but you never picture yourself having to prove it. Um, and he's proven it like a thousand times um, over again. And um, so he is a, a man of his word and he likes to you know, he likes to hold true to what he says, and that's what he said, and he does it every day. And we're there for each other on like the worst days and the best days. And we've had some, you know, some worst days, um, but the best days make it worth it for sure. I do stare down terminal cancer every day, but um, I have absolutely zero intention of letting it beat me or ever giving up the fight to have that one extra second or one extra day with my family. And whatever that takes, I'll endure, whatever it is. Any new treatments, any new trials, it doesn't matter what it requires of me or what pain or anything I would have to go through. If it gives me a second longer with my children or my wife, I will do that. Today is the big day. I'm super nervous. I'm driving right now to see the sculpture for the first time since it's been painted and it's finally complete. And then just in a short few hours, Michael, Sharon, Oliver, Dexter, they're gonna be here to finally see what we've done for them. They have absolutely no clue what we're doing. Wow! That looks incredible. I just saw the sculpture for the first time and I'm absolutely blown away. I'm smiling inside so big because Michael, Sharon, Dexter, and Oliver, I can't wait for them to see this themselves. As a dad, I know how important it is to have like a legacy and I couldn't think of a cooler way to show you what I think a legacy would mean to you. And we're really proud of it. And we hope you enjoy it. Paul, let's op open this thing up. walk in and to see something like that, that's, uh, there's no words for that. And it's there forever, man. That, that's something that my children will be able to take their children to see someday, you know? Thank you so much. That is unbelievable. This has been one of the most rewarding experiences of my life. As a father of two children, I can't even begin to imagine the pain and anguish Michael goes through every day. But the fight that he fights is so inspiring. What he goes through just to spend one more day with his children, to hug them before bed one more time. What hurts me inside the most is that Michael won't be there to see his kids graduate high school. He won't see them get married. He'll miss out on all the amazing things in life that many of us take for granted. 
The sculpture that we have made from Michael shows the bond between father and son, bonded in steel forever. Oliver, Dexter, they can go visit this whenever they want, whenever they miss their father the most. They can go there and be reminded at the courage, the inspiration that Michael shows every day to remember that Michael is always looking after them, that he's there with them in spirit, to remember what an incredible father he is. So it's important that we all remember in a world full of chaos that each and every one of us shows a little bit of kindness. Really? Really? No, no. Oh. <laughs> my dad's moves were way better than yours. But my outfit's better than yours. Fair enough. Anybody, if you donated a penny or a hundred dollars, uh, it all means the world to me and my family and going forward forever.